Good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Internet Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And you have myself, Stephen George, and you're probably wondering why uh, the classical music was still playing. Well, that's going to be explained momentarily. Shortly. <laughs> It'll be explained shortly. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 7th of April, 2013. Uh, welcome. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go off to the communication channel, Stephen, and then we'll explain what happened there. Okay, okay. Communication channels info at oymireland.com for your emails during the show and also during the week if you have any information you want to share with us. Uh, that's uh, that's the place to send it. We also have the chat facility on the website as well. Uh, if you're listening on one of the streams, just navigate to oymireland.com and in the top left hand corner you will see click here for live chat. So you can log in there and you can join in the chat with the fellow chatters and uh, you can post questions there as well for our special guest this evening. And if you'd like to give us a shout on the landline, I have to make sure I'm pressing the right thing here, you can... Give us a call on 046-927-1212. Oh four six nine two seven one two one two. If you're ringing in from outside Republic of Ireland, it's zero zero three five three in front of that. Alan, Steve, right. Our guest on tonight is Miles Johnson. Miles is uh, online and we're ready to go in a few minutes. But we're just going to catch up as usual on a few things. It's been kind of a, a mad last few weeks for me, anyway. And um, uh, you know, loads of things that could break have broken I mean we're talking about computers we're talking about cars and various other things going on so I don't know what's going on I don't know what's in the ether but it's just been a bad few weeks for my end and even even um, this morning I, I went to switch on one of our main uh, LCD screens uh, which is on one of the main computers here in uh, in the studio and that's dead it just died to death um, so we're going to have to now replace obviously that screen in the studio and the, the other a temporary screen we have which actually does all the jingles and the music unfortunately that's gone down as well and the, there's a big kind of it's an LCD screen there's a big white line in the centre and that's why Steve couldn't see what was going on because he couldn't see part of the screen that's right I couldn't see the second desk so I, I didn't realise that the classical music was going to continue on so um, so there you go. So it's just been one of them, the last few weeks anyway, but I don't know. And you're, you're done with a cold, Steve, aren't you? I've got a little bit of a head cold there, and it's, um, yeah, it's just kind of wrecking my head, so to speak. Um, quite, yeah, actually, I'm taking a few bits and pieces for it. I'm taking some paracetamol and uh, some other uh, Sudafed tablets just to kind of unblock the sinuses. Um, I'm, I should be taking the MMS, but... You know, I'm kind of holding off on that. <laughs> I want to be at that store before I take the MMS, although I know I should take it. Uh, but it's just, it's just the taste that it really is. Uh, but before I go to bed tonight, I, I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock back uh, a, a, a little maintenance dose of the MMS. And actually, do you know what, what, what else I've been taking as well? I found it in a, in a health food shop uh, quite recently, and it's hemp oil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I don't think it's um, fully fledged. Uh, you're going to get a high kind of hemp oil, but it is cold-pressed hemp oil, and it says made from, you know, hemp seeds. Uh, so that's kind of taken it as well, just to boost the old, the uh, vitamin B3 and 6, or whatever the hell it is. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the story. Okay, well, it's just, yeah, it's just, the, you know, I said it last week on the show, everybody seems to be kind of in zombie mode at the moment, because of everything that's going on. We're just kind of surviving. We're not even living. We're just surviving, and it's just, it's um, it's it's very bad to see, and we're all feeling it, you know. And I don't know. We just heard well. There was a bit of good news. Steve came in with good a bit good a bit of good news. I don't know whether you heard, but Steve, if you just want to give it a mention there. Yeah, I won the lotto, and I'm out of here. So, <laughs> so I'm out of a dodgy. Um, the good news about the MEP. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, one of the I just heard this there before I come up. Seemingly, it's news from two days ago. Uh, anyone who's in Ireland or who's watching the uh, what's going on politically in Ireland will realise that the Labour Party and Fine Gael are in coalition. They're the ones who are running this country into the ground. Well, one of the MEPs, Nessa Childers, uh, from the Labour Party, has decided she's had enough. She's not happy with the way that her party are running this country. And as I did, as I said, running it into the ground, so she has walked away. She has jumped ship. Now I know a few other people have jumped the Labour ship uh, recently as well. 
not sure exactly what she's going to do. What she's going to do, sorry, if she's going to team up with another party or if they're just going to become independents. Uh, we just have to watch this space, I suppose. But uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, spraying going on during the week. I don't know if that's anything to do with maybe the. The, the zombie nation, the state of the zombie nation, because as Alan has, has correctly said, uh, people are kind of going around in a, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a blind stupor, for want of a better word. And I know I did point out, and I took a, p- a picture there, I think it was last week, we were kind of heavy spraying going on uh, this neck of the woods in County Meath during uh, this week in particular. And I'm not sure if maybe they're... they're the powers that be, or the powers who think they are, the powers that be, and um, may, maybe they're just, you know, fed up with the likes of us and people who are waking up, and they're just trying a new bug spray, and they're uh, putting that into the atmosphere to to calm us down, to quieten us down, uh, because people are starting to wake up. I mean, even in my neighbourhood, uh, a lot of people who I would have thought, you know, I wouldn't even, I wldn't even tell them about. Uh, anything, the fluoride, the Wi-Fi, or you know stuff like that, because they they wouldn't get it. But even even in my neighbourhood, a couple of the neighbours have started to kind of uh, come up to me and just ask me questions, you know, silly things like, do you know what? And have you heard anything about um, Wi-Fi? Ma- and it's supposed to be dangerous. And I just mentioned to one of them. I says, uh, yeah, so it's funny you should, you should say that. I actually have a a, a a large report and a small report. I said the smaller one is kind of easier to digest. So I must give it to you. And uh, another neighbour as well, and even my father-in-law. My father-in-law is kind of—he's—he's he's been a Labour Party man all his life, and uh, he's even as regards to say this household tax and the household charge. He's the one who's always saying to me, "Oh, just pay it, just pay it. They'll get it out of you one way or the other." And after we we were at the meeting, uh, the one down in the Trim. hotel in Trim—I can't think of Trim, Trim Castle, Trim Castle, Castle yeah. yeah. I was just there. I, my, my father joined up. Uh, he he subs- he joined up to that. As did I. As did Alan. And several other people that we we both know have also joined up. But my father-in-law, who, as I say, he he's kind of anti this and anti that, and you know, they get it out you one way or the other. I didn't even tell him about the meeting because I figured he won't be interested because he's so set set in his ways, and I actually hope he's not listening. But. Um, I was talking to my wife during the week, just something about the meeting, and uh, he asked, what are you talking about? So I, I told him, and he said, you should have told me, I, I would have went. He handed me the two euro and said, sign me up, will you? So he, he signed up as well. He's, he's kind of fed up with the way this country is going. And as I say, he's a labour a labor man all his life, but even, even, even he now, he's, he's starting to waver. I, I think it's a, a case a lot of people are beginning to realise. I mean, these households that turn around and go, you know, as Ben was saying, he was going around some houses and people were going, a war, Fianna Fáil house. I mean, how can you be a Fianna Fáil house with the country being in the state it is and these parties responsible for bringing the country to its knees? How can you be, you know, that ignorant to the fact? Now, I'm not, you know, again, we're not going to take sides, but, I mean, let's face it, the two, two, them two parties were responsible, plus Labour, for bringing the country down to its bloody knees. They were involved with the bank guarantee, so let's not beat around the bush. And that's the, that's the problem. I mean, that's what they they did. So these people who are just conditioned, our conditioning or some some strange and weird loyalty to these parties, I don't know what it is. It's very strange. But anyway, let's get on with the news. <coughs> yeah. The news. <laughs> the news. Now, during the week... Um, Oh, by the way, thanks to Vin at TNS Radio. Vin's just said that he has a, a, a monitor that we could have for the studio. So thanks, Vin. Uh, big, uh, big uh, thank you on that one. We'll try and get down to you tomorrow and uh, get that off you. Um, there was a, a journalist, or a budding journalist, I should say, called Mark Maloney, and he wrote an article, and he was basically like a, like a, um, what would you call them, a troll. A troll, you know, is it a tr- troll? Troll, troll, a troll, potato, a troll, tomato, tomato. Uh, basically, a troll regarding Ben uh, Gilroy on um, primetime TV and your woman trying to corner Ben into being saying he was, you know, involved in the free man movement. And basically, he said um, 
Uh, this rejection did not go down well on many Freeman websites. You know, Ben turned around and he said he wasn't involved. But he was, he's not involved in the Freeman movement. He's aware of it, like we're aware of it. But, you know, we're not involved in the Freeman movement. Um, but we're aware of it. And, you know, we had um, a document on our website for people to download. Uh, registered users can actually download the document and make up their own minds what they want to believe or not. Just, just because we have a document on the site doesn't mean that we're a Freeman. It just means that we're giving you the option to download and make your own mind up, along with a lot of other documents that we have on the site. But basically, um, she see, he goes on and says, um, uh, Freeman websites which had viewed him as a poster boy for the movement, despite claiming he didn't know where the people get that from, links to the Freeman movement, and has previously done interviews for Freeman websites such as Scottish Sovereign on the Land in September and Open Your Mind Radio in August. So, apparently this guy is labelling us as a free man website, you know, uh, missing the point, as Vin quite rightly said in TNS, that we're called open your mind, and that means open your mind to everything. Um, lazy journalism, again, I'd have to say. Um, a station which distributes the free man guide to Ireland. Yes, we do. We distribute the free man guide to Ireland, because we like people downloading it and making up their own mind. Um, not the parrot, not the... Um, uh, propaganda that we get from the mainstream media. This publication contains many of the strategies and arguments which Gilroy has employed in the past, some of his and his other group, People for Economic Justice. So the chap's name is Mark Maloney. He has a fantastic career ahead of him, being involved in propaganda for RTE and any other uh, stations. Uh, apparently he's written for a number of papers, so keep that name on, on, in mind there. Um, I'm surprised he actually didn't mention TNS, but maybe that, that's a good thing. Um, because he's obviously labelling everybody as being free men, you know. I mean, if you talk about being free and more men, as you said, Steve. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a free man. Yeah. I'm not involved in any free man, of, free man of the land movement. It doesn't mean I'm not aware of it. It doesn't mean I agree or disagree with what they're about. But do I consider myself to be a free man? Yes, I do. I don't think I was born into slavery. If I was going to be born into slavery, I'm pretty sure my parents would not have had me. Because I'm sure they wouldn't like any of their children, their offspring, being born into into slavery. Well, I mean, I suppose economic slavery was that one thing. Anyway, anyway um, and was it, should he, ben, ben owns TNS, didn't? Oh yeah, it, that's it right. That yeah. yeah, Ben owns TNS, and I think he owns uh, OAM as well. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the other thing that the, you know, lazy. I always call it lazy journalism because that's what it is. Um, and very quickly, the last thing on the list is basically the uh, United We Strike Marathon is on next Saturday. Now, I don't know whether we're going to be involved or not because we've just loads of things going on at the moment, but we'll see what happens anyway. But just to remind us, the next Saturday, UWS Marathon. Steve, how's your week? Um, yeah, I think I've already told you about my week. <laughs> my week has been kind of involved um, just going out on a limb and you know, sp- spreading the word, so to speak, about... Uh, about the Wi-Fi, because that document, do you remember the one that um, Walter sent us over? The one that, uh, one, uh, one part of it was written by uh, John Weigel, and there was a, a covering letter that was from the IDEA, which is the Irish Doctors uh, something association, I can't remember what it is, yeah. uh, and I'm sorry I can't. But uh, I, I had printed it out, and I think I mentioned last week, I showed it to one of the guys in work, because he was interested in... in learn more open his mind about the Wi-Fi I left it in work and then I brought it home left it sitting on the kitchen table and it kind of it was it was it sparked off a debate between myself and herself there last night and because she she's kind of concerned that I have the Wi-Fi switched off in our house and it's only put on if it's absolutely necessary and that's that's it. I mean, I I can't see how it will be necessary. Like, if the kids need to get something that, where my my daughter has one of these tablets, and she she wants to download something or update an app, uh, she asks me to put it on. But not, nine times out of ten, I will just ask her what the app is. I will go online and download it anyway, and stick it on a little SD card, and there we go, job done. But um, she spends a lot of time now up in her friend's house with the tablet, and she's getting exposed to the Wi-Fi, so. I just, uh, we, we had a, a family, uh, a good old family argument. I think that's the best way to put it. <laughs> yes. Debate, yeah, debate. No, it wasn't a debate. Um, it was a good old, a good old punch. Well, it wasn't a punch up. But, yeah, she's 12. But we, we had a good old discussion during, uh, during the, the last couple of days in relation to the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's kind of difficult because 
my wife said to me, just explain explain to her exactly what you know. And I said, well, I don't want, I, you know, you, you can't just blurt it out in front of a 12-year-old. I'm not ins- insulting her intelligence or anything like that, but uh, when you just kind of blurt it out there and you start using words like uh, cancer and death and dying and, and tumours and all that, I, I think that's that's really going for the shock value, and I don't want to do that. I, I would rather kind of do, go the softly, softly route. Um, so that's kind of what we did, uh, what, what I did anyway. We, we opted to go that way. Uh, but, yeah, I, I've been educating a few more people as well. As, as I mentioned, one of, one of my neighbours w- was also uh, inquiring about it, so I was happy enough to, to put her in, in, in touch with some research that I've seen. As Again, as, as I keep stressing, and I do this... I do this in, every time I speak to anyone, and I'm, I'm sure we're all the same. Um, every time I, I give them some information, I say, "Don't believe a word I say. Go and just do. Go and check it out for yourself, and do your own research because I could be wrong." And they're going, "Oh no, I'm sure you're right." And I'm going, "No, don't. Don't be sure of anything about me because then if you find out that I am wrong, you'll be pointing the finger going, you're no, 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 you're wrong." I said, "No, do your own research." Mm. Um, Lucid says here, children can handle it. Um, do you know what, Lucid? You're probably right. You 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 probably are right. Um, and maybe maybe that's that's what I should have done. I should have sat on you know uh, mentioning cancers. But as I say, we'd we'd say um, the document that we got from John Weagle, it's still at home on the on the kitchen table for anyone who wants to read it. So. Oh, we have oh. a uh, we have a caller coming in. Let's um, let's bring in the caller and see what's going on. Good evening, caller. How are you? Well, this is Miles. I'm trying to contact you. Oh, oh, my, Miles. How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, your audio kept dropping out, so I tried reconnecting, but uh, I was only getting very much every second word. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll bring you in um, now, actually, and uh, your Skype is still up and running, is it, Miles? But well, isn't that the point? I've been trying to call you. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh. Just try and call Miles there again. We'll see if we can. We're just calling you on Skype again, Miles. Okay. 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 okay, cheers. Okay, this is another one of those situations where everything is breaking down, isn't it? This is it. Are, are you there, Miles? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I've just realised that your phone number is 1212. That, that's Scotland Yard, isn't it? No. 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 Is it? 1212, <laughs> one, 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 I think, is the phone number for the original Scotland Yard. Is it? <laughs> you know, fixing of Doc Green. Well, listen, while you're in, let's let's just go with the flow and uh, let's just bring you in. This is kind of <coughs> a part two of an interview that uh, we did the initial part one with you. And there's so much happening in the world these days that even though you, you were on a few weeks ago, I'm sure we have loads to talk about anyway. Now, um, so let's take it, let's take it what you are, you've been doing uh, recently, which is you've just come back from the Amish conference Yes, um, Amash, basically, Amash, Amash. Amash. not the Amish. <laughs> We're not. We don't walk around with silly hats and stupid beards. <laughs> although I highly respect all religions and creeds. Yes, Amash. It's, yes. It's, 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 Which it's, apparently is an Irish word, believe it or not. Oh, is it? Okay, it's a Gaelic. Yeah. Gaelic, I'm is it? Fluent in Irish as you are, as equally as I am. I know that anyway. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, we I, we we went to the Gaelic talk for about ten years, didn't we, Steve? Oh, we, we, <laughs> we, yeah. All right, um, all right, Miles. So listen, thanks a lot for coming on uh, on the show again. As I say, we're going to do part two. So let's start off with the the conference that you've just attended. Yeah, this is this is very important because um, we're, we're we're two years old, and um, I think I can say that a major UK broadcaster has shown considerable interest in the Amash project because the witnesses are up there. You know, they're normal people having extraordinary things happening to them. And um, the witness statements, I just, the whole point is just to keep burning these witnesses, but just push, pushing them out there and uh, getting the data out there as much as we possibly can so that nobody can deny that it is happening. Because that's been the case with previous issues. If it's, if it's in a paper file stuck in somebody's office somewhere, nobody's going to find out about it. Mm. Maybe they'll read about it in the newspaper or once a week, whatever. But to have it up there so that people all around the world can actually um, actually see what's going on. So we we did this yesterday, really. We, we, we only had a conference last, I think, October in Nottingham. 
And to put another one on it with, with less than six to seven weeks' notice was a really big deal to get that done. And um, Joanne Summerscales, he founded a mash and two years ago with, with myself, um, really has been working head, you know, hand over fist. Uh, Are you going to have any over here? And crucially, is a painting by the daughter of one of the witnesses who's a multiple abductee. Because it was the last thing her daughter painted before she was suicided using um, what we believe is what's called wolf programming. And when they activate the wolf programming inside you, you will self-terminate. Uh, and you will behave perfectly naturally until the very last second. And when the opportunity arises, you will then self-terminate. And that's what she did. And so the conference was sort of dedicated to Gina, who was a fantastic and brilliantly talented, brilliantly intelligent, wonderful young girl. I just turned 20 um, when she she killed herself in, in West Kensington in London. So um, to hold it as well in a Masonic hall raises a few eyebrows. But it seems that um, in Nottingham Masonic Hall, it's, it's pretty serious. We had Anne Andrews. I don't know if people have heard of Anne Andrews. Her son and her family has had a lot of experiences. She's a wonderful lady. Another guy called Ellis Taylor, um, he's a brilliant uh, healer and an experiencer, and uh, he's a very close friend of the wonderful um, Mary Rodwell. And then we had two very, very important people in um, the child experiencer side of things, because this is to do with the banning in England or in the UK of home childbirth. And they described all the um, procedures and things involved with that. Okay, let's let's back up a bit for a minute. Um, two questions for you. One is obviously uh, from their air chat facility, but the first one is: Will you um, at any time be looking at doing one of your Amish uh, uh, Amish? I'll have to get the word right. Amish conferences. Ash. Over, uh, Amash. Just, over just think of a mashed potato. A mashed potato. Um, is there any chance of you doing a conference over here in Ireland? We, I would very, very much like to come up to do that because, I mean, obviously I'm from, I'm from Ireland and uh, I started the Irish UFO Research Centre in a previous century because I don't want to give you the decade because then I'll be showing my... Oh, don't be silly. Basically, I started it when I was at school. Wow. And we did the Irish UFO Research Centre and we met up with a great bunch of guys um, in Dublin, and we sort of linked all up and uh, started investigating some UFOs. And it's great that, I think it's Kevin Mac McNally uh, has written some, a couple of books now on Irish ufology, and the late Betty Myler did a great deal of work. And uh, essentially, I went straight from the investigating UFOs straight into the pirate radio situation in Dublin way back in 1978, and uh, that was a tremendous experience, and I think I've mentioned that was a sort of a huge wake-up call, a wake-up switch-on, which we later, not until about 1987 or so, really sort of called it the intelligence transfer sequence when we put on a big border blaster uh, called KISS FM in Monaghan, uh, or rather Monaghan Town, in 87, um, to be followed by Energy 106 uh, from the same site, through the late 90s into the mid-2000s with dance music radio at Belfast because that was really important what was going on because we now know uh, there's a brilliant new film out called Hooligan by, uh, it's called Terry Hooley the great Terry Hooley Good Vibrations it's just been released by BBC Films it was premiered in I think in Belfast last week uh, Terry Hooley was a cross cross in fact, non-denominational, really cool guy. And what we found out by reading his book was in Belfast, everything was waking up. There was a huge wake-up call. There was a huge expansion of consciousness. It was absolutely fantastic what was happening. And I never knew this. Uh, you know, Van Morrison, if you listen to Van Morrison's songs, they are really heavy-duty songs if you listen to the higher consciousness that comes out of some of, some of his early work. And, and his later, his mid-work. Um, and what happened was the Illuminati could not tolerate Ireland waking up. Mm. 
because that sequence was embedded uh, when this this Illuminati ritual, which is the Battle of the Boyne, was not a battle. It was a ritual between two alien families. And uh, if you know the, the the sort of history behind David Icke and who the who these beings really are, the Valon, they are. Uh, absolute evil according to Gina mm. this girl Gina who died which is what the Amash conference was all about she was directly tackling the Illuminati and her expression was they are totally evil Yeah, this is when we really have to really wake up here guys because we're all got our pre-programmed thought processes as to who is that who's good who's bad everybody in this planet all life on this planet is now under threat. Yeah. All life, including interdimensional life, like various Earth-based ETs, the jinn, anything with a signature, which is life on this planet, we're looking at a full stop, a termination, because what they're doing is, without speeding ahead, the whole point is that um, with Belfast, that's why they brought the troubles in. That's why we've had this trouble and strife, because the trouble and strife that we've had in Ireland was programmed in during that Battle of the Boyne ritual, which was designed to create a bipolar conflict thought process embedded in the Irish culture, so the Irish would row and fight with each other, but under no circumstances could the Irish be allowed to wake up. And I sort of Rather than using the Irish, the Irish um, term, we should really be calling ourselves Irish. That's of the Aryans, the higher spiritual wise ones, and uh, that's that's of all races and creeds. It's not a race of blonde, blue eyed. That's a complete fiction. That's a complete distortion. The Nazis had their stuff all taken over. Again, that gets too deep. But um, the point is that Ireland. Was a, was a vestige of a vast and wonderful civilization a long time ago before it was wiped out. Well, one of the things that I, I've come across in uh, my research, Miles, funny enough you should say that about the Irish, uh, I think we said this before in the previous show, was the four races that they want to keep down are the Native American Indians, the Irish, the Scottish and the South Africans, because we are known to be, um, you know, revolutionists to a, to a certain extent, to fight the system. Um, and I can understand, obviously, you know... Well, I think, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. you are not really revolutionaries. It's mm. just that if you are aware, it's the awareness. Mm. This is what Radio Caroline was transmitting, sub, re-subcoding the music of the 60s. Uh, it, was, it, it was an awareness. Once you're aware of what's going on, you've got to take some kind of steps to deal with that situation. And if that's revolution or whatever it is, then that's the way to go. Yeah. But um, it's not, this is not, this is not a, um, I hate to say it, but this is not a British oppression of Ireland problem. This is a total oppression of all awareness throughout the whole civilized world, right to the steps of Russia and, and Siberia. All civilized, intelligent, coherent, perceiving individuals who recognize the true spirit of the earth and the, the, the intelligence and the wonders of, of life on this wonderful planet. Something absolutely evil has come here. And it has to be stopped. And it was stopped when all the gates and portals around the planet were shut. And um, that's evidenced by what some researchers are claiming uh, was the way that the Bosnian pyramid was filled in from the outside in. They were stopping something from the outside getting into the, the, the trans-temporal and hyperdimensional gate which was in that pyramid, if you knew how to activate it. Mm. And this is crucial to one of your guests, which I know you're going to be interviewing soon, John Irwin's work. Yeah, yeah. And remember, John Irwin is a British soldier from the 1950s because in, in, in the UK they had um, national service where you had to serve um, until they, they abandoned it in 1960. Um, but he was actually pre-chosen at birth in 1938 
to become a member of this elite British military team, totally secret team until he published his book, I think in 2005, called The Sixteen. And their task was to do as much rear guard damage to the progress of the Illuminati's destruction and takeover of this planet and all life on it way back in the 1950s. All they could do was stall them. But now we are coming to the final days, literally the, literally the final days, of free corporeal human life. And after that, when that, if that is achieved, eventually all life on this planet. Because in order for the Illuminati to sustain themselves in physical uh, in a physical world, in this physical world, they must use human bodies to do it. They cannot maintain their dimensional integrity by any other means other than to actually come in through humans. And that is why human fertility, human propagation, has always been the key to all of these religious head case nutters which have run our planet and particularly, you know, we focused in Ireland and other cultural and centres which have all been shut down over those thousands of years. But let's, let me come in there, uh, Miles, because the loads of questions are beginning to come in now, so <clears throat> we're going to have to throw a few questions over to you. But before we went live on Skype, before we went live on air, I did mention to you that John Irwin did send over, and it's probably, uh, if the listeners want to you know, pop along to YouTube and type this information in the can do. Um, I, think it's, I think it's important it's John Irwin with a U. A lot of people yeah. would maybe look up I, an I-R, you know, I, I R, it's U-R-W-I-N. Yeah. yeah, exactly, look up John. Well, the two things that John sent over to me, the two links, was a lady called uh, Kay Griggs. She was a wife of a colonel over in America. And, I mean, basically the interview goes on for eight hours. So, you know, you really need to put a bit of time in to listen to the interview. Now, I'm, I'm on kind of part three at the moment. We're halfway through part three at the moment. But what she says, what goes on in the military and what's been going on, is just, it'll blow your mind. But also, there's another lady called Sa- Savvy or Sa- Savly. And her name, uh, she was involved with the Illuminata. Basically, her parents were involved. And she was brought up as a child involved with the Illuminata. And basically, all the training and the mind programming that she went through as part of it, which is just, again, phenomenal. Now, I might put it on the, the web links that we send out to registered users, and they'll be able to go along to uh, actually see that. But let's back up a little bit, Miles. And Steve's putting together a few questions, but one of the first questions that came in, and it's something that you said earlier regarding wolf programming, just tell us about that. I've never heard of it, and probably a lot of pe- people haven't. Well, basically, um, when they mind control you using techniques which some people claim are used in Project Monarch and MK Ultra, what they have to do is they have to totally traumatize the child's mind to total fear. Then, in order to survive, the mind then creates an alternative uh, or alter, it for short, personality where it then can be safe right? But once you do that, and once you, if they, they try to create a series of these alternative personalities just to stay alive, just to get away from the pain and the horror, um, they, they, they then create a sequence or a situation where they can directly access that, that alternative personality, which is another part of you. They can then program that personality and then um, get that person to switch on to that personality at, at, at will. So that means that that person will completely change into a completely different personality and be able to perform functions and deliver messages. And it's a brilliantly secure way of sending information. For instance, you'll have a very, very wonderful model or a pop singer or something, somebody who's in the public eye. So you can program them. I mean, Britney Spears is a classic example. Um, I mean, that, that interview where she actually switched to a different personality during the interview was, was very interesting. And her, there's a, whole, there's a whole lot of information about that. I'll just, just mention that as a typical example in the public domain. Yeah. You can then go into that person, can then do, do whatever they normally do. Nobody suspects that it's going on. 
They're then invited to the special parties. And then the person at the other end knows what to say or what to do to switch that person onto the alternative personality. Now, the, then they deliver the message, and then they're given another message to send back. It's a bit like carrier pigeons, but the point is it's, they don't care. The collateral, if you shoot the person, they're dead. You don't, if you don't know the code to open that person's alternative personality, you can't get anything. The person themselves don't know, doesn't know anything about it. So it's a brilliantly designed way of using people as carriers of secure information. Yeah. If, however, that person becomes at risk to the program, you've got to have a way of shutting it down. And wolf programming is installed so we understand in that person so that what you do is you then activate the wolf program. And the wolf program is a self-termination program so that the person who receives it, unless that act is broken, unless a program is actually broken, that person will then self-terminate. And that's what happened to Gina. Um, she was fighting the Illuminati. She'd become aware of this. And it turns out there's a whole history to Marie Kayali's life, including um, the murder of her father and also a major set of UFO events which happened in Dublin before they left, they left Dublin. Uh, I mean, in some respects, her life's a little bit like the railway children. One fine day, mummy says, we've got to go. Just take whatever you can carry. And they <coughs> left everything in Ireland and then came to, uh, to England, where she then s subsequently married a Syrian, this handsome young Syrian guy whose mother and father just happened to be top elite members of the Syrian intelligence service were mates of the, uh, the related to the Clintons. There's a Clinton connection. And also there's close ties with Henry Kissinger. So this is this girl's daughter who was terminated. And it also turns out that she's got a, a lot of connections on the father's side as with twins. Hmm. And, and there's another whole research on that that Kathy Morgan, an Amash witness, has been doing a lot of work on. Uh, again, what the twins are and how that's created. There's more information coming out about that. It sounds like um, the programming that she went through is similar to Cathy O'Brien, Transformation yes, of America. Yes. You know, they, the breaking down and the multiple personalities and the trauma um, that they, they, they put them through um, and then that's how they can manipulate them, which is similar to what Cathy O'Brien went through. I'm going to pass you over to Steve, Miles, because the questions are coming in hard and okay. fast. So we'll just throw them at you and see what, uh, see what we can, uh, we can uh, sort out. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Um, where are we? I'll start from the beginning. Um, Kelt wants to know, Miles, have you heard of Cobra or Cobra conferences? They say that they are representing the Palladians. And follow on from that, uh, Lucid wants to know, which uh, are, the, are the tall ones, the Palladians or the Andromedans? Uh, well, the tall ones I know are of the tall whites. Uh, as they grow older, they, they get very tall. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a function of their aging. It's how they eventually grow old and die. They last about 900 years. Um, humans were meant to last 300 years, but that's been truncated to a maximum of 150. But I wouldn't want to live to 150. I don't know the Cobra conferences. I've, I've heard of them, uh, but I don't know what they're like, so I couldn't give any detail on that. And I'd be very, very suspicious of anybody who's saying that any kind of a conference is specifically, you know, run by the Pleiadians or the Venusians or anything else, I'd, I'd take a bit of a large pinch of salt with that. Yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, Miles, have you heard of Dark Knight Satellite, satellite in Space? Also, um, what is it? What is I story? think Dark Knight Satellites are... Uh, they might be related to the Skynet satellite system, which is a British intelligence satellite system. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't want to say too much more on that, because I, I, I'm not that familiar with Dark Knight, no. Okay. And the second part of that question is also, what is the story, what is the story with the greys? The greys are humanoid utility robots, bio-robots. Um, and a lot of people use them, so um, to say that they are um, good guys or bad guys is a bit of a, mis is a, bit of a problem. 
Um, I mean, the humanity will be developing itself into robots, cyborgs, within about the next 30 years. Um, so uh, this is the thing about Barry King's research or work, that they were knocking off, the, the British were knocking off uh, and the Americans in, in Berkshire, underneath this base, under the village of Peasmore, they were knocking off what they call programmable generated life forms. In other words, they're the same kind of thing as the Project Monarch program people. Uh, they're, they're the actual knockoffs, sort of bred under license, in this dulcy type base in England. And they, they are controlled by the military, used by the military for, for abductions, my labs. And basically, they're sort of a, an alien utility vehicle, a humanoid alien utility vehicle for, you know, for, you can just, for sale, so to speak. So a lot of other races would use them or they'd be involved with a lot of other alleged ET type races or extra dimensional races. The important thing about the, the, the generated life forms is that they've got the ability to hype up what we understand is the spin speed of the outer shell of the atoms. Each atom's got electrons. Uh, what we think of as physical little billiard balls ro rotating around a, a little nice little sphere is a very crude way of looking at an atom, but an atom has got a, a, an electron that spins around it, and if you up the spin of that electron shell, then you can actually jump the whole physical body, jump it up to another reality or dimension. And, that, and by that way appear to be invisible and activate and run around uh, in a different visible range. And because they've done that, the photon light that you would see reflected off them is out of our visual range, so we can't see them. Mm. They haven't actually turned invisible. It just means that the light that they would be emanating wouldn't be in the same photon packet that our eyes are adjusted to uh, seeing as light. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense because actually, Miles, during the week there, a, a little trick that I yeah, done years ago, I done it with my six year old son, Jordan, the, it wasn't the last, I think it was about Friday. Um, I was pointing a remote control at him and I was pressing the button and I said, Can you see the light? And he said, No, don't be silly, Daddy, there's no light coming out of that. And I said, No, there is. And he said, No, there's not. And I said, Trust me, there is, you just can't see it. So I got a camera. Just a regular digital, a small digital camera, and put it in front of it, and I, I, let, I let him do it himself, and he's pressing the button on the remote control, and he can see it coming through the, 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 the camera. He can see the, the light flashing on the screen, and then he's yeah, the thing about infrared, it looks green. Yeah, but he was fascinated because he, he, he then pulls the remote control away. He's looking at the remote control, and he's putting it back. Why can't I see it? And I said because it's outside. I said it's it's it's. Uh, I didn't want to com uh, confuse him, but I said, it's outside our visible range. And, of course, he looks at me then. I'm thinking, oh, my God, how do I simplify this for a six-year-old? <laughs> my dad's well, not that. Well, I think, I think yeah. that is a really very good way of illustrating things. That's bloody good stuff to do that. There you go. It see. shows that something unseen is there and it has control. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great way to educate people because when, you, when you're dealing with people who are just not open to any disinformation, um, to say to them, well, you know, uh, UFOs could be in the infrared spectrum, but we won't see them because they're in the spectrum. And if you say, and then if they, you know, start getting cynical about that, you can say, well, you know, when you change your TV station on your TV with your remote control, do you see a beam coming out of your remote control? And then they, that gets them thinking. Because it's the best way to kind of, you know, to put it down to, um, you know, brass tacks, but bring it down to their level so they'll understand it, you know. But there's a couple more questions we have. Um, we go to them, and then there's a, a few more things that we need to talk right, about. Right, I'll go just, uh, there's, there's two more on the list. I'll just throw them out there uh, uh, real quick. One came in from Howie. Howie's wondering, um, um, Miles, you probably understand this question. I don't. He said, since the 16 were active from the 50s, when did the Illuminati take over the UK establishment? And sorry, and the second question is uh, the, the serious film uh, with Dr. Stephen Greer is going to be coming out. It's going to be opening on April 22nd. And Kelt is wondering, have you any thoughts on Dr. Greer or the film? Well, I'm very sorry. I mean, I'm actually listed 
in the disclosure document going back to 2000. I was very honoured to be included on that on behalf of another colleague. Uh, but my name is actually in the disclosure document at the back of the terms of the people at, at the back. Greer, I think, has been, with the greatest respects to him, he, he last time he visited England, uh, he was known to be surrounded by a bunch of very, very, very unsavoury people. When he came to the um, UFO Congress, it was alleged, and I have to stress, it was alleged that uh, his team of buffoons uh, had to have their guns taken off them. He's fallen in with a very, very sour, nasty crowd, and that is about his. Uh, his film was mentioned at the Amash conference, and person after person got up and said, there's nothing new, Greer has produced virtually nothing new to this subject, for the last 20 years, he is an ex I, I really couldn't, he's not a, he's, a, he's become a very unsavory person, um, and I'm very sorry to say that, because I felt that what he started was an absolutely brilliant thing, uh, but it's clear, in my view, that he has most definitely been headed off at the, at the pass, and um, he is... Anything that he's going to be giving out is going to be severely managed disclosure by the very people that you do not want to have any connection with. So I would put a big thumbs down to that film, but I would still recommend people to see it. And um, Make whether up moment. Greer himself is actually, and his team, uh, uh, there are some very unsavory things that I've heard about that, that, that particular group now, and I think that's very bad news. I, I think you're right there. Um, he started off brilliantly, especially with the national press disclosure, with all the people up on stage, Carol Roslin and everybody else. I think that was brilliant. But and he even he even said it himself. He said he started that for disclosure, but yet he does things that he can't say, which really defeats the whole purpose of the whole disclosure project in the first place. <clears throat> so you have to but, ask yourself, who I is mean, behind I, him? But, but, the, bo the bottom line on disclosure is the governments of the, of the world as such have been lying tooth and nail through the, for, for 60, 70 years. Hmm. If you really expect them to suddenly, oh, have we been lying for 70 years or we did it in your interests? Yeah. Are you then going to ex believe what they're going to say now? Hmm. I think not. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally agree with you on that one. Now, with everything that's going on at the moment... Sorry, there was a first question. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Steve? Um, yes, the first part of that was uh, since the 16 were active from the 50s, when did the Illuminati take over the UK establishment? Essentially, um, it, it goes back about 300 years, which is why you have the three main social revolutions that, that, were, that were done by the Illuminati. You have the first one, which is the, in, the revolution which happened in, in Ireland, in 1690, which was programmed to shut down and cause a bipolar conflict in Ireland. In, and generate this matrix that, that Ireland's lived under essentially ever since. Uh, the joke about that is you have the orange men um, walking, and, but they're not, they have no idea of the symbols they're holding, really. And those symbols are the keys to the whole thing in the first place. Uh, the second was the French Revolution, and the third was the American uh, War of Independence. Essentially, the uh, French Revolution was when the Illuminati were essentially kicked out of Europe, from what I understand. Mm. So uh, those are three indications of major, so major changes which happened in history, which are directly connected to the Illuminati. But it's not the, 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 the key to the British situation is, and let's not, let's not fool ourselves by thinking this is something that's happening over the so-called UK, um, for instance, there was one island off the coast of Ireland which was never handed back to the so-called Irish, and that is where we now understand there is a massive alien U.S., Russian, British, undersea and uh, uh, alien facility that makes Area 51 look, look like a Sunday school picnic, and that's way off the coast of Cork. So if anybody can get an old map 
that shows any islands off the coast of Cork, that's probably where that base is. So that, that shows that really uh, the Illuminati have got full, full access and control here. But didn't they say that they destroyed, you know, David Wilcox was on there a while ago and he said, oh yeah, they've gone around and they're destroying all the underground bases. No, that was a load of balls, uh, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, Winston Keach and I worked out what these uh, undersea, uh, underground explosions were. Wilcock is a classic case of managed baloney. Uh, they picked up on something, which, which uh, there were four massive earthquakes at certain levels, below ground, obviously, in, in England. England only. And that's important. Mm -hmm. There was one in Yorkshire, there was one in Cumbria, there was one in Co uh, Cornwall, and there was one off Kent. And these were, un these were underground bases, which we understand were being taken out. It was, it was all at a particular level. It was about three and a half miles down. Now, the Cumbria, it was three and a half miles down because Cumbria is a mountainous region, so the depth was still the same, roughly, in each area. And that was something that myself and Wynne Keach, who's a brilliant colleague, friend of mine uh, from Yorkshire, had worked out that the types of... This, this, the energy signature from those explosions or from those quakes were not earthquakes. They were energy discharges. Now, they were not nuclear weapons which were left there and blown up. I mean, if you're going to deliver a nuclear weapon, you've got to drill a big hole or put a submarine in there and, oh, and just put it in there and just quietly leave the little... You know, it's, it's, you're not leaving a banger behind. Any kind of a weapon like that has to be some kind of directed energy weapon, and that is a, some kind of scalar-focused earthquake-type device. And if you want to read up on that, you need to read up the works of Tom Bearden on uh, scalar warfare, mm. where energy weapons like that can be used to generate earthquakes, and that's how you deliver it. You've got to deliver it with a, with a weapon system which is impervious to the distance of rock and the earth crust, and then focus that energy... and and get an energy release. So, David Wilcock was essentially saying what we'd already said had happened in England, but he said it about a number of bases, and I, th I think, I forget the other one, I don't know who the other character was who was involved with that uh, in, in, in England, but um, in, his, in the States. The other guy was this guy from, from um, Japan, who's a whose name escapes me. Oh, ben, Benjamin Fulford, is it? Yeah, Benjamin <coughs> Fulford, because I was on Edge Television earlier that year. That was uh, January 2011. And no, I think it was January 2012. January 2012, where we were discussing that very subject. And for instance, the idea that the, uh, the um, earthquake that created that tsunami was done by a nuclear weapon, it, it, it bats. Nuclear weapons don't work properly. Mm. So what, what, do, what do you think is happening now with the whole North Korea thing at the moment, Miles? What's your take on that? Well, they want to stimulate us into some kind of global war. And um, North Korea... You see, the point about all this is you can't declare a war that hasn't finished. The, the, the Korean War was never, was never finished formally. Because North Korea never agreed to a cessation. It was just that they, they just stopped fighting for a long time. But you can't have a war unless you're going to have massive uh, logistical backup. And China, which is essentially now an Illuminati organized um, country, uh, uh, is, has got to agree to finance and support North Korea. Now, well, I'm surprised you said that because just recently I watch a lot of Russia today. And they were yeah, talking about it. It's a, it's, a, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I, I find it like really, really good. And they were talking about the BRICS countries, which they're setting up a, a separate um, banking, global banking system away from the IMF. And China is obviously part of the BRICS nations. You know, so you have anybody. anybody the bank, the whole banking system is on the verge of collapse. I mean, what mm. what happened in in in, in Crete? It was Crete. Um, it's just uh, the, the next it is alleged could be New Zealand and the other smaller countries. So uh, this, is, this is an attack on the banking system, which is by the Illuminati, because they've designed it that way, because they're undermining the whole fear state that they're 
producing. So we all get completely insecure and um, terrified of what's going to happen. Like lose your home, lose all your money if you put if you don't have it. But the safest place to keep your money is in gold and probably at the bottom of a garden somewhere. Well, I want to. I want to come in here with that, Miles, because I do have a statement here I'd like to just read out for our listeners. This was on the website getoutofdebtfree.org, and one of the statements was made in a court case by a judge in America. It said, um, let's not forget about the stunning decision made in August 2012, in which the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals from Illinois ruled that once a person deposits their personal money in the bank, the bank is free to do whatever it wants to do with the depositor funds, including covering their bank losses, engaging in risky investments, and, presumably, even stealing the funds. It is clear why Jesus chased the money changes from the temple. Now, that was a judge that actually made that statement. So, you put your money in the bank, and they can use it for whatever, and you don't have a leg to stand on. And I think we are all in a situation now, especially with Cyprus, with the 60% taken off people that have money over 100,000. And there was 132 com- uh, companies moved their money before this took place. So, you know, and also the, the president of Cyprus as well moved his money three days before um, it was announced that this would happen. So there's obviously insider information there going on. And they're saying that Cyprus is a template for the rest of Europe. Yes, yeah, it's, it's Cyprus, of course, not Crete. Yeah. I say Crete. Yeah, Crete, yeah, Cyprus, yeah. Right. Because Cyprus obviously only has a population of something like 800,000, I think that's what they said. And they well, said what, what Iceland did is a, is, the, is, is a classic case. Iceland basically told them to, to take a running jump. And I can pretty well be pretty sure that Iceland, there will be something that they're going to do to Iceland to, shall we say, slap their wrists. But, I mean, well, I mean, I know we had uh, Brigitte, Jan's daughter, on the show. She's a DMP for Iceland. And she said, basically, that people wrote, wrote their own constitution. Now, they have their own currency, which is the krona, I believe. And they did have a referendum where 73% of the people voted that they to not pay the actual banks. So, I don't know. I mean, Iceland are doing pretty well at the moment. But, you know, as you say, you know, the powers to be might have a different... Uh, take on things but where do you see us now where do you see things at the moment miles where everybody i mean there is a mass awakening up going on at the moment in the planet loads and loads of people are waking waking up to what's going on because well we have to but what so do you think that that's going to be our saving grace well i would recommend that people read a, a series of books called the ringing cedars of russia with this wonderful woman called anastasia because Essentially, the banking system is now in a, it's, it's, it's now in a, fa- in a failed situation where they're going to crash the entire global economy um, and cause no untold amount of trouble and strife for the ordinary working and ordinary people. The way to get round that, one of the big problems that the, the while Russia was going through its turmoil of um, uh, of getting rid of communism, uh, everybody under, didn't understand why, why are the Russians in, in absolute de- desperation and all that sort of stuff. I mean, they weren't really happy, but their economy on the, on, the, on the economic stage was in total meltdown, disaster and all that. But what the ordinary folk who couldn't give a damn about the Russian oligarchy, they just got on with living with barter, and basically been able to grow their own food and working together as cooperatives and um, using the system of barter to actually just survive. And, you know, if you do some work for me or I do some work for you or, or whatever, that, that kind of system of non-monetary trading. Yeah. And that was very well illustrated in those series of books and also the way on how you grow vegetables and food which give you the maximum health benefits. Mm. And if you learn how to do all that, you become self-sufficient, you become healthier, and you're not spending any money. So I would advise people to try and think back to that kind of basics. But that's the point. That kind of knowledge, that kind of way of living, 
that kind of information that's carried out in those books about this wonderful woman called Anastasia in Siberia, all that kind of stuff was beaten out, murdered, burnt at the stake, and warred out of us until we, we had to live in this economy and this type of living which depended on this banking type system. And the banks of the Illuminati, William of Orange, brought the banking system in. Hmm. Yeah. So this, this should be a major alarm bell. They brought the system in, they know how to control it, and it's designed to fail. Yeah. And you lose. So take your money out of the banks. And, um, I mean, you have to keep money in the real world. You have to try and... I'm not going to do a David Icke thing where everybody should just leave and become unemployed and live in cloud cuckoo land. But I would not bother having any kind of a savings account in a bank. Yeah, definitely. You're better off in debt to the banks. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And um, mind you, what Russia Today was talking about, and obviously we've, we've been aware of this for a while, is they were talking about putting your money into, even Max Kaiser, putting your money in, into either uh, Bitcoin or gold or silver. Yes, well, this is the thing, gold. And, and if you look at the supermarkets, um, they have um, had gold counters. Oh, go and sell your gold. Bring your gold to us uh, so that you people get rid of their gold. You mm. do not want to do that. You want to keep your gold. Definitely. Well, that's why of the last... And other precious metals like that. That's it. Of the last couple of years, I said that. When that started to happen on TV, cash for gold, give us your cash for gold, I, straight away, I, I knew... What they're, you know, that was the plan to actually get all the gold off the people, give them worthless money, which it will be worthless really compared to the gold, because <coughs> gold will keep a value. And uh, and I knew straight away when I seen all these cash for gold adverts. But listen, we're going to go over two more questions from our listeners. So Steve, over to you. Yeah, I do actually remember when when we seen those ads on TV, and now in a lot of the cities, there's a, they've actually opened up shops and stores. And in some of the some of the supermarkets around here, there's there's, there's one down there in Navan County Mid. They actually have a little stall where you go behind the little curtain and they do the dirty deed. Then they, yeah. they take your gold. But yeah, we'll continue with the questions. Uh, Shrewd operator from TNS is wondering, um, can we ask Miles to say a little bit more about the secret meanings of orange symbology? Well, I think you just need to. Uh, there's, a, there's again, it's at the book, Ireland Land of the Pharaohs and some of the work of Michael Tazarian uh, on that matter is, is very useful work. But one of the uh, people you need to look up is a guy called Jordan Maxwell. Some of his interpretation of the symbols is, um, is, very, is very, well, very well read, and I would certainly look that, that up. Ireland Land of the Pharaohs by John, um, uh, what's his name? Andrew Power is a heavily sought after book because it's, it actually discusses the matrix reality and the whole thing behind that so-called Battle of the Boyne. It wasn't a battle, it was a ritual. Um, the symbols, the best thing to do is to simply go through each symbol and research that and try to stay off the internet because once you start doing that, they'll, they'll start tracking you. If you want to try and dig it up in literature and books and libraries, okay? Okay, okay, no problem, Steve. Um, uh, two six on our own chat is wondering. Here's a question: What symbolic position do kings and queens have to the Illuminati? Also, wasn't Diana supposed to be raised to be a sacrifice? And doesn't the name Diana have special connotations within the Illuminati? It probably does. I'm not an Illuminati specialist in that kind of deep. Um, Knowledge base, uh, Jordan Maxwell, people like that would would be uh, a better source. But definitely, Diana was sacrificial. Yeah, and she looked. I think Ian Crane pointed this out. Um, she looked very, very like the keeper of the the, Ale the library at Alexander before that was destroyed, <coughs> and she was similarly ritually terminated. So it seems where you have a situation where the same kind of icon. But I think they miscalculated with Diana. They had no idea that they would have such, it would have such an effect. And they really, I think they made a big mistake in the way they terminated Diana. But remember, Diana was, 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 was terminated, or her accident was 
coincident with the energy line which goes right underneath the Illuminati Tower in Paris. That's the Eiffel Tower, mm. the Tower of Light. And where that accident happened was exactly where that energy line is coincident. Mm. So her trauma and her death, they were feeding into this virtual Earth grid. And this plugs into the same kind of trauma where a lot of these children which are being amused and terribly treated in, in England and, and across, not just England, the British Isles. We have these terrible places all across the British Isles. Um, they choose energy points so that they can pump this terror and fear energy into the earth to poison our earth grid. And this is where the direct re-engineering and re-establishment of, an, of a new earth grid is vital if these um, creatures, creatures which infested the Illuminati are going to survive. And if that happens, that's when all existing life on Earth will be terminated. It will just simply fall apart. Mm. So, um, I mean, at the moment, with the fact that we have North Korea going on, <clears throat> now, North Korea are not stupid. They're not going to pick a fight with people. They're not going to win. Um, but, again, you have to look at the propaganda that's going out there. And um, I'd say the BBC and the ITVs are probably saying that North Korea are trying to, you know, raise a bit of trouble or trying to tempt them into a fight by putting missiles on the border or whatever. Um, but, uh, I mean, we all know, well, we all know in the kind of, if you're awake to what's going on, that North Korea would be mad to go and do something like that anyway because they're out, outmanned and outgunned anyway. Um, but... I don't know, there just seems to be, I think this year is going to be a breaking point, Miles, because, you know, the push is on at the moment. We're seeing it over here in Ireland at the moment. With There's people, and as Steve said earlier in the show, more politicians leaving the parties. People disillusioned with the current parties at the moment and what our government are doing. And you have up and coming positive parties which might be able to get in and might make, make a change. Um, and that's growing successfully, and more and more people are beginning to hear about it and get involved in it. So, Well, I'm very glad to hear that, because essentially the Irish political situation has been a, a, an Illuminati front since day one. Yeah, well, th- I mean, what's happening over here, I mean, you know yourself what the way things were with Ireland and the governments, they're just controlled, and the puppets for the Troika at the moment over in Europe, the IMF. So there are, there are kind of um, um, shoots of uh, greenery coming through, uh, with this new party, which is DDI, we've had Ben on the show. And DDI want to bring in direct democracy, which is what we had in Ireland uh, in, our, in our fourth constitution. Um, Switzerland have direct democracy over there. And we want to get rid of this kind of party whip system that's currently in and has been in for years. I mean, I've, I've always said it to people, and it's as, as simple as this. You know, the people that are in power, I mean, Turkeys don't vote for Christmas. And the people in power won't vote a system in that's going to affect their way of life and the way things are for them. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had this kind of um, thing in, in England with the, with the so-called Liberal Party. Uh, remember, remember, the Liberal Party was a huge, massive party in, uh, in England um, since uh, or the, or the, or the, the old UK until basically the Labour Party came along. And the Labour Party came along with those massive social engineering which produced the working class. Well, what's happening right now is that the middle class are being wiped out because they do not want an educated and what's worse, financially relatively able class anymore because they are the ones who can think uh, and actually you know, rebel. So they've got to create a, a state of social engineering where the elements, the educated elements within society um, have the ability to actually do real change. What we're all getting dependent on is computer network situations. And uh, there's been a few tests recently in cities in England where whole swathes of the Wi-Fi and um, broadband network has simply become faulty for a, for a while. And people's ability to actually communicate and think that they're actually able to send in messages and get all the information they need off the World Wide Web and all that, that could be switched off in an instant. Yeah. And when it's switched off in an instant, you are sitting there with your computer terminal and 
well, you're going to be just going to be talking to the wall. What you've got to do is not at any time get on the public, um, on, on, the, on the wide public, i.e. become known. The only way this is going to be done now is for people to meet quietly, in secret, and communicate in code. Don't use any kind of elect electronic com communication whatsoever. But don't stop using electronic communication because if you fall off, if you fall off the grid, they're going to be wondering what you're doing. Why aren't, why don't you have a, a color TV? I mean, people, people, people who have black and white TV and are, are a focus of weird attention. Why do you not have a color TV? You are different. What's wrong with you that you don't have a TV, a color TV? Or even worse, what's wrong with you don't have a TV? In other words, you don't want to stand out at all one way or the other in the social engineering or the, or the map of mind consciousness. Well, uh, which means what you have to do is just quietly meet mm -hmm. and influence quietly from the background and, that does, and not at any time become known. Because it's like, it's like the old phrase, those who talk don't know anything and those who do know something don't talk. Mm. Well, I know I was talking to John, and I'm sure you have. And John said he made a very, a very uh, relevant point that he said it's not so much the people that you need to wake up the, the sheep out there; it's the people who can make a difference, i.e., the guards, the army, the politicians. If you yes. can wake them up, then make a change. Because your enemy is not going to be the Illuminati; your enemy is going to be the people around you and the guards and the army. Yeah. So now I said I happened to say it to a guard not so long ago. I was in conversation um, with this person, and I said, "Do you know something?" I said, "If the guards and the army put down the tools tomorrow, all this would stop. The only reason why this is going on is because the guards and the army are still doing their job, even though they're being repressed by the government. If they, if the guards and the army said." That's it, no more, that's it. Now, I suppose you'd call it a coup, for want of a better word. But at the end of the day, if they did, you know, say, right, down tools, tomorrow, that's it, no more, then our government wouldn't, we'd be able to get rid of them. And we'd be able to put in, you know, maybe temporary government, or we'd be able to sort something out, you know? Well, you have to know, the point about uh, that is you've got to work out the entire strategy hmm. and make it work to start with um, the thing the key to this is that everybody thinks they're not going to be the one who's going to die everybody thinks if the I'm alright Jack situation I might be uh, at the, at the top man in the, in the Masonic order I might be the top man in the, in the, in the Catholic Church I might be the top man in global inter, international media empire I could be the controller of major broadcasters. I could be the man in great power and feel very secure that everything will be all right. I will be doing this and I'll be okay, but the other guy, the ordinary people, ah, oh, they're just scum. I mean, you get rid of them anyway. Because everybody always expects, these people always expect it to be the other guy that's going to be done in. Mm. Well, what they're going to have to realize is they are the ones who are ultimately going to be done in because they've been sold a turkey and eventually at some period of time we're going to be able to put together some information which will hopefully demonstrate that for these people once all these people who are in massive positions of power or even people of, of extreme power who are in positions which are relatively unknown in other words not necessarily the big guy sometimes a little small little so and so somewhere who can do a little couple of things to arrange big events to happen and just quietly sneak, sneak, sneak away, they all feel that they're going to be the ones who are going to, to benefit. Well, they've got to realize that if this grid is established and we, as we had at the conference, we had um, some midwives who are showing how the birth process itself has been taken over. You're now forbidden. It'll be illegal in the UK to have a home birth. So they're getting the very point where the child is born and how then it, it receives certain endorphins and certain um, stimulants from the mother 
and this emotional connection with the mother, they take it away before it can do that so that the child's awareness and hold empathy is destroyed and limited. And the same goes for people with telepathic and high sentient awareness. They're the people they're targeting with all these various chemicals like aspartam and uh, fluoride in, in the water and all that sort of thing. Well, it's um, funny you should say that because UK column. Um, Brian and Mike and Louise, I think is the lady's name, um, showed uh, a guy videoed his child being taken away from him. He was, the child was a day old. And he actually videoed it in, in, in the house where the police turned up and the social workers took up and uh, came in. And they just basically, and his, him and his wife, you know, quite rightly were in, in bits over it. And they just had no, there was no emotion from them at all. It's, you know, to be honest with you, we know it's all NLP programming anyway. And then um, they it's just worse took than it. That. It's worse than that. They're actually not human, a lot of these people anymore. It's just uh, amazing. Now, you know, we know there's, there's some cases where kids are being abused and that has to be dealt with. But I just think the whole idea, as Brian said on the show, that social workers are being paid a fee. They get a bonus for taking kids off parents. And we know that that's the, the demise of, uh, the, of society, of yes. families breaking it's, up. It's state-sponsored state child stealing. But of the course. point is that when you have a birth certificate, you, aren't, you're, you are no longer, you, uh, the, the, that human being is no longer yours. It's a property of the state, the company of the state. Yeah. You're owned by the company. Okay, we have a, a couple of more questions and we're going to be starting, we're going to start talking positive stuff after them. Okay, so Steve. Right, okie dokie. Um, three of oh, I've three good ones here. Um, this this one just in from John. John wants to know: Can you ask Miles if the island that was mentioned off the south coast be one and the same as the lost island of High Brazil, High Brazil, or High Brazil? No, it's High Brazil. Uh, uh, High Brazil is rumoured to sort of come and go. Uh, there is this. R rumor about ha High Brazil. All, all I know is that um, this massive base off the southwest of Ireland. The, one of the clues to that um, was at the, at the Bentwaters Woodbridge twin bases in the extreme east of England. Um, I mean, they were put there during the war so that they were the furthest east that you could actually have a landing strip closest to Europe so that Allied aircraft, when they were coming back, had somewhere that they could actually aim for if they were in trouble and they could actually crash or land. I mean, the Woodbridge runway is a huge, very long runway. Um, but that is where there were a whole pile of UFO events and all sorts of things going on in the, night, in, in the early 1980s um, and the late 70s. But there's also talk that um, there were, in, during World War II, there were tall whites, uh, some kind of ETs, were actually seen on that facility. But uh, again, the point about that is it was also the uh, Apollo Space uh, Emergency Rescue um, Team were based there. So if there was any emergencies in, in any of the space programs, they would be the rescue people who would go out and rescue, you know, the, the Apollo or, yeah. um, or the Gemini, you know, the American space program, including the shuttles. Well, the only active mission that they actually did in the entire 30 or 40 odd years of their existence at those bases was to recover, uh, was to deal with a ship which was in trouble off the southwest corner of Ireland. So what on earth is a, is a rescue team based on space, ex, space rescue doing its only active mission off the southwest corner of Ireland? Why wasn't it the ordinary uh, lifeguard and you know, uh, you know, or air sea rescue people from Ireland who dealt with that, or even the, the, the you know the RAF, or whatever? But no, it had to be this super classified team from the U.S. Air Force Bentwaters Woodbridge base, and that is a signature. That's just a little pointer to that base in the southwest corner of Ireland, or Banffy Bay. It was in the early 1990s. There was a lot of very large alien craft seen coming out of the water down at Banffy Bay. And one of the reasons why I'm saying this, maybe there are people down in Cork who know why the secret to UFOs lies in Cork Harbour. 
Uh, <coughs> sorry. Well, that was that was interesting, um, definitely. And I know where uh, we got a comment on the chat facility there saying the sinking of the Lusitania was down that way as well, um, and that's what brought America into the war, I believe, uh, the sinking of the Lusitania. But um, Miles, um, are you there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, I want to try and focus. We're well, just looking at the time, and I'd like to try and focus on on the positive stuff now, if if there yeah. is any, and just focus on what we can do, what's happening on a positive way, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because obviously you you've just come back from the conference, and do, what did you get? Is there any positive positive uh, stuff? Any positive feedback you got from the conference? Any good stuff going on? Well, I think the main the main thing is people just becoming aware. I mean, for, for instance, Jeff Scott, who 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 talked about it at the conference, he was um, a brilliant guy who found a certain number of bases in in England, and th- making people aware that these implants have been put into people's heads. Uh, now, for instance, we've now been able to actually. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure when I last talked that I just come back from the Phoenix conference. No. Yeah. No. Sorry. I mean, have I already fight. discussed that we can now track these implants inside people? Well, you did say, no, he just come back from Phoenix. I think you were just in. I think, uh, yeah, well, yeah. the point about it is that um, Marie Kayali, uh, um, this Irish lady who, who was there, had been tar- we found that she had s- a seven implants. Now, the point about it is that using ultraviolet light, using an ultraviolet uh, B and an ultraviolet C light in total darkness, if you scan yourself, you can actually see this, this series of dyes which they leave on you when, when they touch you, when they abduct you. So that's a positive way of empowering people to actually find these implants. I think you guys have started a, 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 a sort of an implant checking thing. That's right. Not RF meters. But if you're able to get uh, what's called a mineral lamp, that's a high power that's a, that's a relatively powerful ultraviolet light which emits in the UVB and the UVC range. And if you're able to scan people when you're doing your scanning for the implants using radio frequency meters and other things like stud finders, uh, Gauss meters, uh, E fields and B field meters, um, you can actually see if you've been touched by a non-human or invisible entity on your flesh, it will leave a mark. So there's physical traces there. And we got the photographs of Marie's um, traces. You can actually see the marks on her body. So that's a really positive step that you can take control and actually find out what's going on with people. That's in the second, I think the second most important thing was yeah. the fact that childbirth is being specifically targeted uh, in the way that um, I, I, it's, not a pos- it's a positive thing to know about this. So you can actually then demand that you have the right to have free childbirth, you know, in your own home or without all these chemicals and, and uh, procedures being done in you. Like at the critical time when the, umbil- when the umbilical cord is cut, how the bond between the mother and the baby, you know, the baby actually resting on the mother's chest at, you know, at birth and making that, you know, being that release of, of hormones which makes this bond work with mother and child which helps the child grow in a wonderful enlightened and beautiful way all of this has been taken away from us and that is not uh, to be accepted by anybody mm-hmm. and I think the, the other thing is just basically standing up and being counted is one thing but really what people have to do is just quietly talk amongst themselves out of earshot of telephones or any other types of surveillance if you can manage to get into a place or um, a place where people can't drop in. And I mean literally remote view what you're doing. Yeah, because we know they, they can do that and they have the, the technology and the people to actually do that. Yeah, um, I mean the whole thing about synthetic telepathy, uh, remote viewing. The, the, and these, You see, this is another thing that um, you know, these bases in England have been used for horrendous programming and the use of young children and, and teenage uh, children for psychic warfare and uh, spying and, and uh, looking at, at various people. Uh, it's, it's absolutely horrendous, but by empowering, they're actually helping, they're actually screaming for help. 
and they want to get out of these bases. So by highlighting this and pushing this agenda and not letting it be um, uh, avoided and swept under the carpet, uh, we will hopefully raise this issue to a level which we can discuss in a civilized way and bring all the relevant people who are committing these crimes to book. Because ultimately, these people are human. Whatever's happened to them to carry out this abuse and crimes on their fellow people, mm. they need help, but they also need taken out of the positions that they're in so they can't do it anymore. Can I uh, just ask you, you talk about the, uh, the, the Verons. This is the thing that uh, is an <clears throat> empathic healer who now lives in Wales, called Chris Thomas. That's right. I've seen the video on, on yes, YouTube. He's yeah. saying that basically the Earth is under threat from this Balon race, yeah, yeah. which came from a twin <clears throat> sun system, which was in trouble. And that is the origins of this so-called planet Nibiru. Nibiru is nothing to do with this solar system. It will not be coming round and um, causing trouble. This is a story from the twin star system of Balos, and the people who came from there are Balon, and they, according to Chris Thomas, find that the Earth solar system that, that we live in is a wonderful place to be, and their objective is to simply get rid of us, take over this world, terraform it for their purposes, and live happily ever after. Well, if we don't actually wake up, this, and they are the ones who took over the Illuminati, right? Yeah. That's why the Illuminati, the so-called Illuminati, because once you use a name, it's already not called that, right? Yeah. That's to say, the, the people who've got influence and power and control over all the, sub, the, the related substructures and sub-control social structures on the planet, those are the people we need uh, to... Um, uh, convinced that they're not doing the right thing. What do you think about this? Uh, have you heard of this chap called Tolik? No. Right, okay. Because um, this uh, chap, you, you, if you, you'll come across it. He's done a few interviews. Obviously, I've asked him to come on the show, but he's very shy to come on the show. I kind of, I kind of said to him, because he's, he apparently has a direct link to the... Now, keep it, oh, they, we'll call it Open Your Mind for a Reason... He, has a, he, he says it himself, on his own website, the Andromedan Council, he has the link to the Andromedans and the fact that um, we are going to be in the fourth dimension by January 2014. That's all baloney. Yeah, and um, we have biospheres around the planet Earth at the moment. Baloney. That's all. This is, this is all Valon crap. Right, okay. Uh, the point about this is we are higher dimensional beings ourselves. We already have it in our DNA. We are brilliant and wonderful sentient beings who have got immense abilities and powers which have all been taken away from us and anybody who exhibits those powers the health service in the UK certainly have been targeting anybody who's got talents like that um, it's still effectively under the witchcraft act you're know, burning people at the stake is just about as close as you almost get they are absolutely paranoid that human beings will actually remember the, um, the amazing abilities that they have, which is why Ireland, as we went back earlier, was shut down, which is why when the consciousness rising, which happened in Belfast in the, in the late 1960s, was shut down by, by Intel, uh, by the Illuminati, who operate the alphabet soup agencies. Mm. Uh, that was all shut down. In Dublin, we had this massive awareness, this wonderful awareness, which arose right across Ireland in the 1970s. And Ireland went through its what the UK had in the 60s. Ireland went through it in the 80s, because that was the first time that the youth and the brilliant talent in Ireland didn't go off and export their talents abroad. They actually stayed behind, and that's why you have this wonderful, great team of people. But that generation is now hitting its 50s now. And when I, you know, 30 years from that, from, from that point. Mm. So the next generation coming along have to be made aware that Ireland was this brilliant place, aware and uh, uh, consciousness rising. And what you guys are doing right now is helping bring that consciousness up. It's brilliant work. Open your mind. It's a brilliant thing that you're doing uh, by empowering people to um, realize that you have the abilities yourself and you will not give your permissions away to other people to poison you, con you, 
and send you into destitution. And you will not allow your politicians and representatives to do that. And you should hold them to book. Yeah, definitely. Criminal activity. I, I definitely think, and I think that a lot of people are beginning to to do that over here. I'd like to return the uh, the compliment uh, and uh, Miles and say, you know, the work that you're doing and the interviews, and you know, you do so much work with the Amash project and interviewing people and making people aware is, is also fantastic. To and and giving us you know information that you know you come on and we can get you know f- updates on what you've been doing and the information you're putting out there I think is very important as well um, and compliments to you for for doing that um, well, Steve um, over to you I think you have it yeah I didn't want to interrupt you there yeah, so I, I, I even made it bigger on the screen um, Miles question just in from TRP on the TNS chat he's wondering do you, you do you have any solutions uh, to regaining our so-called forgotten powers. Well, the first thing is um, just read up on the fact that, they, that we got them. I think, if, I think Ingo Swan's book, uh, Penetration, which I think is worth hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars now, uh, we don't have five senses, we have 18. And the idea is to, st- to be empathic with what you eat and what you do um, to maximize those powers. What's happening now is that, uh, or happening for a long time now, is that people of both uh, Irish extraction, and I really don't like saying this Celtic thing, there's an assumption that Ireland's always been Celtic. Um, It goes back to Native Americans, the Native Aboriginal peoples of various places on the earth um, have been hunted out to take these, uh, these abilities away. So what you do is, co- is go to... Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm beginning to ramble here. The, the point is that each individual person has got their own way to expand their mind and open their mind. Hmm. There's no general solution to it. But if, there, if one is to give a general solution, is to become more aware that you yourself are a brilliant and talented, empowered, fantastic and wonderful being. And don't let the propaganda from the naysayers and the misery fear porn police to scare you into a fr- into a freight into a frightened state of mind, which is what all this thing about wars and all these other terrible things which are in the world um, uh, are making people into a state of fear. What you are, you've got to have to bring the love energy into your consciousness and bring it into your being itself, and that you are a wonderful, sacred, and wonderful being as such. And definitely, and to bring and that, the flower and through which the love frequency is a higher frequency, and yes, they, they want they want to keep us down on that lower frequency. Yes. Yeah. So and, and that's it, the very point about the earlier comment about the fourth dimension. Hmm. We're already five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dimensions of reality in our existence already. Why do you want to limit yourself to this thing called the fourth dimension? Yeah. Yeah. Now we did. He did. Fair, fair enough. He did mention the the fact that on Russian TV, you can see this on YouTube. There was actually two suns in the sky, and he, he, this is there Ru- weren't two suns in the sky. All of this thing about two suns. Sorry to interrupt again. Mm, yeah. but the, the, these people point the camera into the t- stupid sun, mm. and they're going to get lens reflection, and you're going to see two suns. There aren't any of these two suns. Nobody should ever point their eyes or camera at the sun. Yeah. Well, right. uh, again, pop onto YouTube and have a look, and you no, have to I make your own mind. That. That. They're all yeah. they're all lens flares. Right. It's bunk. It really is bunk. Okay. Well, just to be. And anybody actually seen two suns? Well, just to, if, if yeah. you point the camera into the sun, you will get multiple reflections inside there, and you can get a second image of the sun inside mm. the lens. Yeah. Well, it really is bunk. Yeah, well, this is. I just thought I'd throw that out there because. You know, again, for people to go and check it out and see what they think. Just so um, we, we whilst, uh, whilst Russia Today is giving us a great deal more information than we are getting from uh, the established media, which is frankly appalling, yeah. um, it does have its own state agenda, and Russia is no less an Illuminati place than anywhere else. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. I mean, again, I think Russia Today is very good, but like anything, like any information you get, you have to, if it resonates with you, fine. If not, then think about it. Right, Steve, question 
over there from Wales. Yeah, just what, just while we were talking about Russia, a question came in there a while ago, Miles. Have you any opinion on the, uh, the speculation that there's a comet coming in from Russia in February? February? Well, we're past February. There is this... Well, next year. Sorry, no, sorry. Co- uh, comet. I don't think it's coming from Russia. No, it, well, it's, it, it's a comet that just happened in February. Oh, that, oh sorry, I, yeah. I misread but the question. It comet. It was an asteroid from the Apollo asteroid series. Right, okay. The problem is what brought it in and why was it so unexpected. Uh, that's the key to looking at this. Um, there's a guy called Colonel Ed Dames. Other people call him Dr. Doom. Yeah, I've heard him. He is claiming... Uh, this thing called the kill shot. Yeah. Right? Uh, there's some data out there which I would need to l- really check is that we're beginning to collide with another solar system. Um, and these things take ages, but perhaps there is something else which some other set of force fields which is causing these things to start moving around. One of the clues that Dr. that Ed Dames referred to was when you start seeing um, objects falling in the sky, when you have to see a shuttle-type craft forced down because of uh, physical uh, material coming in. Uh, I mean, we've just had a, an asteroid which came pretty close to the Earth, um, between the Earth and the Moon, and that is getting close. Um, so if there's other objects out there, one of the things he specifically referred to that the end times will be, or well, the kill shot will happen when you get a lot of asteroids, a lot of, a lot of meteors actually coming in randomly and causing a lot of chaos. What will happen then is there will be something sufficiently large will be coming close enough to the Earth to cause a collapse of the Earth's magnetic field and actually pull, not a collapse of the field, but to actually pull the Earth's magnetic field over by between 20 and 40 degrees, and as it then passes, it will then pull, the, pull that magnetic field with it. It will then disappear, and then the Earth's magnetic field will then go back to normal. While that happens, there will be a sufficient disturbance in the Van Allen belts that there will be massive surface radiation dosage, and basically a lot of us aren't going to live past that point. And we haven't even talked about the EMP from the sun. These are well, yes, but the, the, there's another phenomenon which is called the sort of electric universe or the electric solar system, where when you have a sufficient amount of material matter or what will then become energized plasma in the solar system, in other words, if we're going to use some kind of particulate gas cloud, in other words, when the solar system is no longer a vacuum, we are in some kind of a particle field, that will allow the massive energies of the sun to electrically charged discharges will then start going between the planets. That is when we start having uh, a lot of problems. Now, if that starts happening, it means a, a massive collapse and disturbance of the Earth's protective shields, which protects us from radiation. Mm. And that's when um, we will literally get deleted back into the Stone Age. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, um, when this uh, EMP happened in 1859, uh, they called it, uh, I forget the name they called it, um, they had a particular name for it, in 1859 it happened, but because there was no electronics and stuff, a few telegraph poles yeah. blew yeah. out, um, but uh, there was no, nothing major happened, but they're saying that if this EMP happens from the sun, this coronal mass ejection happens, which it's due to happen apparently, then it's going to have massive effect uh, globally, depending on obviously the, w- what part of the planet is facing the sun at the time. Well, th- this is this is crucial to these solar flares and why we have to monitor the space weather, and that is why they have been starting to put capacitor banks in uh, substations where, uh, if they do experience a massive discharge, see one of the main problems is we, we don't need to have centrally generated electricity with loads of wires going across the surface of the planet. We don't need that. If we simply switched off all those big power stations and used zero-point devices or, or some or other more efficient uh, wind turbine technologies, 
we wouldn't have to have centrally generated electricity. And these big, long conductive wires, which just sit there as big antennas for EMPs, it, I mean, that would just those things then conduct into our whole electrical grid and blow everything up. Mm. We don't need that. Yeah. Well, that, the name and of the that... scandal of wind power, uh, the, these ridiculous turbines, wind tur- wind turbines that they're putting up. Uh, well, they're nice, or anyway, for starters. Well, it, well, the point about them is that they're actually scalar wave generators. They generate a high frequency switch switch wave, and they also generate a low frequency uh, sort of wubba wubba type wave into the ground. And that produces problems in the Earth uh, as well. Incredible. That was the, the name of that effect was called the Carrington effect. Right, we have ten minutes, Steve, so do we have quick shot, quick fire questions for Miles? Um, yeah, there's, there's one there come in from TNS, and I just wondered, uh, Miles, if if you could delve into the 18 census theory, please. Well, essentially, this is the propaganda where the, the, the five senses, in other words, you can feel, hear, see, uh, touch, whatever the five senses are. But what they don't want us to know about are, are, in, are, are many other senses. For instance, there's another brain, for instance, that we, which this is medically just come out, that the, the stomach has got a small little organ which is actually behaves in the same way that the brain does, which is probably why when you've had a curry of endolin and 15 pints of Guinness that you don't feel too well in the head. But the, the point is that we've got many other senses within our body which are interdimensional. That's to say that they are part of our biofield uh, and what the brain actually does, how the two hemispheres work when, they, when they're pulsed, and how they actually produce energy, and how it sort of like works like a radar, like a scalar radar. Uh, Ingo Swan mentioned those 18 senses. Yeah, so I just noticed his book is available. I just had a quick look on the internet. His book called Penetration is not available. It is cost of fortune. I had one in the post stolen. It's, it's so valuable. But if you can look at it online, I think it's available online. Yeah. He describes... As a, as a download, yeah. When he started to actually remote view, there was uh, a certain particle detector in the same university which went off the scale when he started um, remote viewing. So we are generating a whole series of energies which they don't, they don't want us to know about, which is why anybody who is telepathic for instance, I mentioned uh, an, an Amash witness, John Shelton, Shelton who um, was butchered by the mental health people in England uh, under the Tradding Act, which is related to the Witchcraft Act, because he was actually working for the Ministry of Defence as an internal remote viewer security officer. Um, so he, because he could do that, because he had these higher senses... And based also on his blood group, he was butchered, so he couldn't reproduce. And this is similar to literally burning witches at the stake. Anybody who was telepathic, anybody who, who had these higher empathic powers throughout history has been sought out and destroyed. Mm. That's why they burn witches, how the, the whole religious structure and of, 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 the, of Europe, and uh, why they went into South America to destroy anything which gave us any kind of contact outside the space-time fields known as the Earth solar system system. I know somebody um, uh, personally and uh, that is actually is very empathic. And he has said to me that he is watched um, uh, on a regular basis. He'll be um, gang stuff. And, and, and followed, yeah, and he's, he said it to me. So I need to um, I need to touch base with him. But once we've reached that time, and listen, it, again as usual, fantastic, fantastic information. Thanks again for coming on, and maybe in a few months' time we'll get you on again if the world is still here, and we'll get. Oh, another the world will still be here because we will make sure it will be here. To in right. a free and wonderful place. Definitely, and we'll get you on, and we'll get an update again on what's going on because it's good to let people know what you're doing and what the Amash project is doing and the people you're meeting and what's happening and the progress you're making. But I'll pass you over to Steve. Thanks again for coming on. And let okay, Steve progress. do the roundup there. 
Okay, again, Miles, yeah, it's been uh, mind-blowing, mind-opening, mind-expanding information uh, for, well, from, from me and I know a lot of the listeners as well. Some, some people um, did put up on the, the chat box there on our site that they definitely want they want a part three. Uh, seemingly, you, 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 you command a large crowd. Whenever you're on, the, the, the chat boxes be on fire or people just commenting well, on... I think the important thing is that you have your own mind and your own power. Take control... And don't give your permissions away. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Right, Miles. Um, can you can you th- uh, just throw out the website uh, so people can yes, go? Yes, it's uh, www.amash. That's a m a c h dot co dot uk. My videos are available. All the videos are online for free at the moment on Megawatts ten sixty six. That's Megawatts um, YouTube Megawatts one zero six six. And um, all the conference lectures that we did at the weekend, we'll be um, editing them in due course. We've got a couple more of the Amash in America series to do to um, to get edited. Uh, one is an update on the Jin with Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and that's the terrestrial intelligence, this this wonderful intelligence life that existed on Earth before they were banished to another dimension. They want the Earth back, and uh, I think that's basically it. Okay, Moss, well, listen, stay with us there. We're going to go off to a piece of music, and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMIrland.com, cnsradio.ming.com, and icradionetwork.com. And we're back. The screen is still cracked here at OYM. So that was David Bowie and some class of the song. I can't, I can't actually see the name, but it was Space Oddity, I do believe. Yeah, sorry, well, we had to finish that early because we have a few things to talk about. We just actually had... <coughs> A Skype call. John was trying to call us there. So what we do is after the show, we're going to give uh, John a quick ring and have a quick chat with him. And um, we're live at the moment, so obviously we're just finishing up for the show. But we'll give uh, John a shout after after the show. But uh, just a couple of things for next week. We're going to have the um, the girl against Florida on. Ashleen herself is going to be on the show next week, and we're going to be talking about you know obviously the, the anti fluoride campaign and maybe what happened in. Skibbereen, is it? Skibbereen. Skibbereen and the council saying about taking fluoride out of the water and recommending that all of the councils do the same. Well, hopefully that's going to be at a step in the right direction. But you said something, Steve. You said that if the government are saying that it's mandatory, how can the councils take it out? Well, um, um, if, if, the, if the council have said that they voted to take it out to stop the, 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 the fluoridation, but yet... By law, it's mandatory and has to be done. That's what I was told when I contacted the, the county council. It's mandatory, and the county council, you know, they 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 can't they cannot change that because it's it's written in law. So I mean, if the if if the Skibreen County Council or Town Council has uh, t- taken a vote, all they can do is go to the government with that vote and say, and say, um, I know this is law. Uh, we don't agree. With, we've seen some research, and we want to maybe you to have a look at it. So that's, the, the, that's the a statute. I can call it what you like. <laughs> but then the government, I mean, you know what they're like. They probably just go, oh, no, 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 no. We don't care what you've seen. We've seen, you know, other documents that you're not privy to, and it's mandatory, and best of luck. Well, well, at the end of the day, the people have a, have a right to have uh, fluoride taken out of the water, and that's what our politicians, I think, have forgot that it's people power and not their decision. Um, this kind of level of arrogance for politicians politicians is uh, ridiculous and also who we're going to have after Ashling on the show is a lady called Seven now Tony Farrell has Seven. been Seven it's a strange name yeah I know um, Tony Farrell has been analysing the documentation that this lady has apparently this lady um, forewarned um, the powers to be that what would happen in London regarding Seven Seven and she was ignored and Tony Farrell has gone through Tony Varrell is the uh, intelligence analyst that works for York. That did work for Yorkshire Police until they got rid of him. Um, and he's analysed the data, and he's happy with what he's found. So this lady's going to be coming on uh, about probably quarter past eight next week, and she's going to be talking about the information and the evidence that she had, and why the fact who she gave it to, and why obviously they didn't do anything about it because they wanted it to happen. So that's what's going to be on. Um, that's going to be on next week what can I say it's just been ups and downs and a lot of stuff going on 
Um, apparently, Phil Hogan said he's going to put off the payment of the water meters till next year. Well, that was on the cards anyway. I mean, the, yeah, it was always 2014. People don't have the money, but no, I, at the end of the day, do with that. It's because they all haven't been put in yet. Well, no, oh yeah, it's going to take time. Yeah. Gonna, well, do, listen. Do you see how much they want to charge? I w- well, go on. Well, we already know that they want the, the household charge. Yeah. They, they want to get that up to about yeah. €1,200 or €100 Euro a month. Um, it was on one of the newspapers. I can't remember which one, but one of these newspapers anyway. And you know the way the newspapers, they put stuff out there just to test the water. That's yeah. in my opinion. But um, seemingly the, the, the IMF have communicated with the government and they're, they're suggesting that the, the, the water meters, they should be bringing in about a thousand euro per household per year wow on top of your household slash property I mean we can't charge. even pay the property charge how the can't pay won't pay Alan you can't pay won't pay how the hell do they expect us to pay for warning me I mean this could, this honest to god this, this government is delusional Phil Hogan bully boy Hogan it's just ridiculous they, they should be all put up for treason to be honest with you they are not serving the people of the country end of story and any party whip system will not be serving the people of the country. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. So we just have to, you know, non-compliance. That's just what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to put our foot down and do what we can. Um, that's the only thing. Put your foot down or put your foot up someone's backside. Yeah, well, that Isn't as well. A good, a good kick. But we, we're going to have... You know, there is going to be a general election next year. It's planned for 2014, isn't it? Yeah, um, yes, as okay. far as I'm aware. Well, then, we have to do our best to promote the people we want in there, whoever they, that may be, and get out the people who are in there at the moment. So we need to do our best to do that and promote who we need to promote. Okay? We need... Everybody who's awake needs to be going around waking other people up and don't forget we have the bumper stickers we were going to do a quiz but we just got kind of got so bogged down with them uh, so we'll do a quiz next next week for five bumper stickers but um the bumper stickers are still available guys the people are still buying them and it's going out there but we still have obviously we still have bumper stickers here for sale so come on get them on your cars tell people you're awake and start educating people around you and tell them why you're awake and what it means, and give them the information. Yeah, because it's it's actually quite amazing. Um, just I'm I'm not saying everyone should have one. Well, I am saying that, but it's amazing, like because if I w- I could go to people and I could start telling them information and news in the in the hope of waking them up, and you know once you start telling people something that they don't want to know, they'll fight you every step of the way. They won't believe you, and they'll, they'll no 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 no. But when you have the bumper sticker on, and, and as people have come up to me, I'm not, I'm not selling anything, but when people come up and go, what's that about? You go, oh, now they're asking you a question. So, yeah. so, you know, so, so now you're not bombarding them with, with, with stuff. They're asking you a question. And then I, I'm just going to drop a little hint, and I'll say, well, you know, have a look at the website, listen to some of the shows. We've interviewed some you know, fairly knowledgeable people, more knowledgeable than, than I, anyway. And, um, you know, I just, I just say that it's a way of looking at the world, you know, by taking off the rose tinted glasses and kind of seeing things as they are and for what they are yeah by the way I still haven't received and I'm not complaining by the way but I haven't that's a change I haven't <laughs> I know I haven't received my property charge uh, paperwork through the post oh, you must be exempt are you I don't know yeah I mean, oh now I know You're, you must be related to Phil Hogan eh? <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's really my dad yeah um I don't know. I don't know why we haven't received the paperwork. Maybe it's got lost in the post or something. It's I'm not funny. complaining. My father-in-law, although he has signed up to the, the attack the tax, um, but he he yeah, has. Hang on, your father-in-law. Yeah. So is that? I I thought you were talking about your dad. Your father-in-law has me signed dad. up to attack me the tax. Me dad as well. Yeah. I'm shocked at that. Yeah, we, I was talking to. I was, I was, Ah, here. Where, where were you at the beginning of the no, show? No, I don't. Were you, I don't were you not here? I was ta- no, sorry. I thought you were talking about your dad for some reason. Because no, my dad signed up as well, cause and I, Willie. Cause Willie, I, I Willie know, signed up, yeah. Yeah, because I know your father-in-law, and I'm shocked at that. Yeah, not, not as shocked as I was, you know. So, uh, yeah. No, yeah, Willie, Willie signed up as well. Right. I, I just I gave him the information that was on the flyer in a kind of a matter of fact everyone everyone knows this sort of way and then when he, he kind of felt like hang on a second what do you mean everyone knows I said everyone knows this Willie yeah. and then he kind of felt that hang on a second I'm in the minority now and he didn't want to be in the minority oh my god yeah. ok well uh, what's a uh, crown copyright say here Alan's a globalist no 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 I, th- I agree with dictators as long as I'm the di- dictator <laughs> that's what that's what Bush said he agrees with dictatorships as long as he is the, di- 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 the one dictating. Um, 
Right, okay. No, I'm shocked at that. Well, that's brilliant. Okay, yeah, well, people should be signing up to Attack the Tax. Or at least check it out and see what you think. Or make up your own mind. Go along to one of the meetings and see what you think. Okay? And um, see what happens. But we're going to um, finish up. Now, as I say, next week we'll be Vashling uh, number seven on the show. If there's any news or any links, don't forget to check out if you, if you can really take... This stuff is quite heavy, by the way. Uh, the lady's name is Kay Griggs. And um, she eight hour interview of what she talks about on the experience with the colonel. And the other one is a lady called Salvi. We'll try and put it in the web links. If you're a registered user, we'll actually um, we'll put it in the web links for you. And we'll send it out to you. Um, so you can have a look at that and make up your own mind. Um, I don't know who's on with Vincent tonight. He mentioned something about um, uh, the Irish Holocaust. The website, the Irish Holocaust. I mean, I, I think so. He might be talking about that tonight. Um, maybe. I should have asked him, but I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't on the ball. I do apologise. Maybe. Oh, well, you have a cold. You're not feeling well, so that's allowed. That's my excuse. Anyway. Okay. All right. Listen, we're going to love you and leave you. Take it easy. Stay safe. Promote. Educate. Wake people up as best you can, and we'll do it again all next week. So, for myself, Alan James, take it easy. Good night. Okay, and thank you for that summing up, and I will echo everything you said, and sure, we do it all again next week. I'm uh, playing for time here because I'm trying to get me get the mouse on the button. As I, as I say, this screen, the, the big mad white line down through the middle. Yeah, I'm not sure who Vin has on with him tonight, but um, stay tuned to TNS, or if you're, if you're listening on the OAM stream, log on to tnsradio.ning.com. Uh, I'm just waiting for Nimble Horse's uh, picture to... Yeah, the system is reverting. It's the uh, Vin's guest is the Irish Holocaust the org site tonight. So okay, all right. okay, we we'll do it all again next week. Take care. Bye bye.